Are we good? Yeah. You know. I was ready. If I was any better, I'd be Andy. But <laughs> born ready. Right. I know what a lot of you are thinking. What is going on? The average golfer sat next to Bob Parsons, amongst other things. Uh, the main man at Parsons Extreme Golf for uh, PXT, as we better know it. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Great to be here with you, Andy. That's an absolute honour, I can tell you. Um, I describe myself as the, the average golfer. What golfer is Bob Parsons? What golfer am I? I'm, I'm, I aspire to be an average golfer. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, uh, middle of the road handicap. Uh, I, my index right now is 13. Okay. And uh, I, I've been working on it and working on it and got it up from 11. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that feeling. That's a difficult I know that feeling. I'm going the wrong way. Um, and one word that describes Bob Parsons, what would that be? One word that describes Bob Parsons happy. Yeah, well, that's a great yeah. way to be. And, and what I was going to say, the next question, I was going to say that I'm assuming that's a different word that you described the Bob Parsons that went into the US Marines, but maybe maybe you were still happy then, were you? I don't know. Well, I thought I was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I enlisted in the Marine Corps. Yeah. I uh, went during my senior year of high school. Yeah. I was, I was failing most subjects, Andy. Yeah. And uh, joined the Marine Corps with two buddies of mine during the height of the Vietnam War. Yeah. And uh, took my uh, orders that, uh, you know, we all joined together. Yeah. And took my orders to, um, showed all my teachers, and they all passed me. Yeah. So, and then uh, six months later, we were, we were yeah, all really. engaged in the Vietnam yeah, War. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And came out uh, a different man, and uh, again, that uh, a different description, maybe of yourself. Oh, 100%. Yeah. You know, the Marine Corps raised me, they turned me around, yeah. they made me a man. Uh, they taught me the importance of responsibility. They taught me discipline. Discipline meaning that if you have a job to do and you don't, well, you got the backbone to, to see it through. Yeah. You know, not discipline in the form of punishment. Okay. It was, yeah, it yeah. Was plenty of that as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, taught me, they taught me to be proud of myself. They taught me that I could do things, and they taught me pretty clean and sturdy. Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. And leap forward. Uh, quite a few years and uh, you, you're making millions uh, you're successful in, in many ways and you decide to enter the notoriously difficult golf club market what, why why did you do that you know uh, it uh, it's I believe in doing things that I really love okay and you know I love my first two businesses uh, uh, were technology businesses computer businesses um, I'm a self-taught programmer, and I just love those businesses. And uh, you know, the same thing for golf. I really took it up in my in my mid thirties okay. with some friends. We all started together, and then we became addicted to it. We became aspiring golfers. Yeah, yeah. You know? And uh, it's something that I absolutely love to do, and that's why my father told me once. He said, "You know, you should always do what you love because you work harder at it." Yeah. And then he said something more importantly. He said, when you love something, it tells you all its secrets. Because you work harder at it and you think about it more and you stay focused on it. And you do it because not you're trying to you know, make some money, but yeah, because, for the love of it. because you love it. Yeah, and yeah. you just want to do it and you enjoy it. And that will make all the difference. Yeah, yeah. And you're still loving it now? Five years in, four or five years in, wherever we are. You know, of course, you know, any business startup, you have to. You have to, you go through difficult times where it seems yeah, like, yeah. you know, and I mean, you know, there's been times with PXG where, you know, it seemed like it, it's a kamikaze attack. Yeah. Uh, meaning that, you know. Everyone's out, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to have a tough ending. Yeah, yeah. But um, with, uh, it, it has turned around and, and uh, our, the response we've got from the, the golfing community and the uh, public has, has been excellent. It's changing opinions. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so when you started off, was was the idea to create a premium brand product, or just create the sort of ultimate golf club and then work backwards to where 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 it was pitched in terms of the cost? Well, here's the deal: if if you you get there by spending a certain amount of money and you try to engineer the cost out of it, yeah, you will make compromises, right? Okay, you know, often and you will not be delivering yeah, what yeah. you originally yeah I get that developed okay. So what we do is we will not release a product until we make it significantly better. Yep. Like for example, 
uh, our Gen 2 irons, we have our um, SGI, which is, which is uh, uh, Super Game Improvement. And we're not releasing a Gen 3 SGI because we couldn't make it better enough. I mean, it's just yeah, yeah, where it is now is pretty good. Yeah, that now for the, our, our Players Club, our XF, which has been renamed the XP for Extreme Performance, the Tour Blade, we were able to uh, make do, some, oh, make some knock it out of the park yeah, yeah. with those. And so we're releasing that. Yeah. And in order to do that, you know, we had to spend a few bucks. Yeah. Uh, making our, our clubs not trivial. First of all, if you look at the workmanship, it's exceptional. Yeah. We, we have our uh, perimeter weighting that people call them screws, but the, the black weights, you know, all those have to be a certain way, a certain, you know, yeah. how, they're, how they're done. Very precision made, isn't it? it? Exactly. And those things cost us probably a good percentage of what our competitors' clubs cost them. Yeah, it's yeah. just our perimeter weighting. Yeah. And at the end of the day, our clubs delivered with the cost of custom fitting and yeah, yeah. providing all the services that we do along with the, uh, the, the high manufacturer of the club is they cost us what our competitors are selling Every theirs for. Yeah. So yeah. we're in a very different business. Yeah, yeah. The business we're in is high performance. Some people call it luxury. I prefer high performance. Okay. And it's that our clubs, right? If you're a golfer and you can afford it, you can have clubs that are at the pinnacle of technology and yeah. workmanship, that's fair, and that's our niche. That's what you want to do. Perfect. So to th go back to 2014 and where we're at now, we kind of, are, you, are we meeting expectations? Is it where you expected to be? Was there a, a barometer? Did you, did you have any sort of targets in, in, in mind at that point? Well, here's the deal. One of the things I believe in in all my businesses and my business career, I don't have goals. Okay. Um, and so I never knew where it would be, and I never did in any of my other businesses. You know, I'd have uh, uh, somebody come up to me and said, you know, we'd like a five-year plan. I'd say, uh, yeah, good luck. You're not getting one. Uh, you're not going to get one <laughs> yeah, from me. Yeah, right. All right, because I'm a, I'm a today, a here and now, today man. Right. And, you know, when you're on the battlefield, yeah. uh, you got to deal with what's React. coming at you yeah, at the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And that's, that's how I run our businesses. Now, so what I work on is rather than a goal, See, in my mind, if you have a goal and you get to where the goal is, what do you do You're now? You're there, yeah, where do you I, go next? What I do is I have, instead of a goal, I work on the process, making the process better and better, better development, better manufacturing, better delivery, better customer relations, you know, yeah, all yeah. that sort of yeah. thing. And as you do that, you continue to, to get all. better and better yeah. and better. Yeah. You know, yeah. Okay. And I, I'll give you sorry. an example. I, I got one more example. Yeah, yeah. In, in professional football, you have, I don't know, 32 teams in the NFL. All right. All of them want to win the Super Bowl. That's their goal. Yeah. Right. Except one of them. One of them just works on process, and that's the Patriots. Right. Yeah. And I'm not a Patriots fan. Yeah, right. Okay. I'm a Baltimore Ravens fan. Yeah. But it's hard to argue with it. No, no. That's fantastic. Um, in an hour from now, I'm going to talk about, so back on to, to Gen 3. Uh, I get to try these clubs very, very shortly. I've just had a quick look at them. Um, what can I expect? What am I going to, what am I going to notice? You are going to find that if you, if you hit the Extreme Performance XP iron, it is exceptionally long. Yeah. Um, and it feels softer than our Gen 1 irons did. Uh, it, is, it is the most wonderful feeling to feel that thing launch yeah. and uh, go like uh, go like crazy. We had a fella here the other day, he was hitting our Gen 2 7 iron and our Gen 2 irons are, I mean, he was blown away with them. He hit the Gen 3 7 iron. He hit it, uh, he was hitting the, the, the Gen 2 180, the Gen 3 210. Wow, that's a bit of a leap, isn't it? Yeah. That's a bit of a leap. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and in terms of how do you measure the success? Uh, is it is it? Would you like to see more product in the pro game? Would you like to see a pro win a major with some PXG clubs in the bag? Is it about sales, profit? How, how do you measure success, Bob, of PXG? Well, the success of PXG is that our customers are happy. Right. That's the number one number one metric. Uh, would I like to see one of the pros win a major? Yeah, I would. I mean, we've come very close on both tours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not there yet. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have uh, we have a number of wins on 
on all tours. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, while that's nice to see, yeah. I would rather see a customer hit one of our arms for the first time and turn to me and go, wow, yeah. that means more to me. That's fantastic. Um, PXG, um, a, a brand to be shot at, like you said, the a kamikaze attack at one point. Um, when I release a video, uh, a PXG product, it generates a huge split in opinion. Um, and many of those will be in relation to cost. Mm -hmm. um, what's your response to the kind of cost criticism, if you like? Well, my response to that is, is I understand. I wish it could be different. But, uh, you know, if it, if it costs me, you know, a, a, say $300 to deliver a, go a golf club, yeah. I can't sell it for less than that. Yeah, yeah. And I got to sell it for more than that so I can, I can continue to make payroll yeah. and, and run the business. And uh, there you have it. it now, is what, it is. what I could do is compromise that and yeah. go back a little. And they but want to do what we just have to do. That's not what they want in yeah, my yeah. club. So yeah, yeah. that's just not our niche. I understand. Yeah. And I will say this here that even though the clubs are a little expensive, well, a lot expensive. Uh, if uh, you kind of want to, you can you can afford them. Yeah, yeah. No, I just spoke to to Brad and Mike, and they were really it's a similar question to them. And um, I always try, and the big thing for me is, uh, like I say, do these videos. Uh, I've been, I've, I've made it no secret that I, I, I really uh, sort of fell in love with the product. And when the criticisms come, my only thing is for people to encourage them to give it a go because it's a bit of a. Um, it's a real eye opener the first time you try them, and I think that's one of the things that you say, isn't it? The first time you try them, it's a bit of a, the first time you hit a PXG club, is uh, is pretty special. Oh, it is, and I mean, and if uh, somebody hits these Gen threes for the first time, yeah, it's going to be that wow moment well, that we just share it. Yeah, so well, I'm looking forward to that in the next hour or so. Uh, yourself uh, um, and and Rene, uh, founders of the um, Bob and Rene Parsons Foundation, the charity foundation. Um, can I just speak about who, who are the main benefactors of those kind of charities? Bob? Well, first and foremost is, uh, is the Marine Corps. Yep. Uh, there's a, a, a charity that I believe in called the uh, Semper Fi Fund for Wounded Injured Marines. And it's now been expanded to assist uh, members, all members of the armed forces. Uh, I realized that I would not be here today sitting here no. talking with you. Um, uh, for one for the what I learned in the Marine Corps and uh, uh, what they taught me. Yeah. So you know I'm always uh, of the back. mind that as long as I got a dime, they got a nickel. Wow. So uh, our foundation, we give them ten million a year, and uh, we do a, a, a fundraiser that raises another ten or more. And uh, you know it goes into suicide prevention. It goes into mitigating PTSD, making homes more accessible for. Uh, uh, vets that are wearing prosthetics and and all that all that sort of thing. Yeah, that's... Um, so we do that. We also do a lot of services here in the valley, uh, where we help um, uh, people that are mostly people that are here. Depending upon your term, you, you how you think about it, whether they're here illegally or they are here um, uh, undocumented. Yeah, yeah. Right. And uh, we, we believe in things like, you know, if a child's here and the child is sick, this is America. Still yeah. The child needs to be yeah, taken yeah. care of. And yeah. we do such yeah. things like, for example, uh, there's a charity called uh, Crisis Center Nurseries. Uh, when there's somebody here illegally and they get a job, you can imagine they make nothing. Okay. And to boot, there's a whole society I mean, that's society, economy that preys on them. Yeah, yeah. And so if you pay $3 for something, you and I, even though they make nothing, they pay 5 Yeah. I mean, and, and, and there you have it. Well, the question is, when they get a job, who watches the kids? Yeah. Can't leave them home, no. right? And, or hopefully you don't. So the answer is we do. Yeah. Uh, Christ, through crisis center nurseries. So they drop their kids off. The kids... Um, uh, get a good breakfast, they get a good lunch, they get um, uh, education in English and in Spanish in a fun way, a little history, and hopefully one day they'll be better yeah. Americans because that's what they want to be. Yeah. I think that's fantastic because, uh, I mean, again, 
I don't know how much that is, is publicised in the US, but back in the UK, I think that's a great uh, thing, that a message to get across is just how much you do do. And I was going to ask how much money in terms of it's donated annually, but it's, it's literally is tens of millions, isn't it? It's, you know, it's a lot, a lot of money. Well, you know, it, it, you know, we we have it, and we're that's we're, amazing. We're glad we're able to help. Yeah, yeah, no, and of everything we do, that is the most fulfilling. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fantastic. Uh, just onto social media, uh, the the bit that I do. Uh, what are your thoughts in general? I mean, I, the the main thing I do is obviously by YouTube. What are your thoughts on social media in general, and how it's impacted on the golf game, the golf industry? Social media sure has changed everything. Yeah, yeah. It? You know, there's no secrets anymore, Andy. No. I mean, and... Uh, there's no hiding uh, places, there. You know, we went from uh, before social media where sometimes you might want to know someone's opinion. Now, with social media, you get everybody. <laughs> you get it, yeah, yeah. There's no Whether choice. you want it or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, we see everybody thinks a little differently. And yeah. I don't care who you are. You're going to have fans or you're going to have detractors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there was an article published not long ago about our blades... And a lot of the comments were that I single-handedly ruined the golf industry right, yeah. because I introduced clubs that cost yeah, more, price. prices are moving up, yeah, and yeah. that sort of thing. And, yeah. and in a way, I said, yeah, I guess you got a point, but uh, yeah. you know, well, you know it, yeah. it is what it is. And any, and any uh, you've obviously been very successful in everything you've done, so what, what advice have you got for me as a YouTuber to uh, get from where I am now to uh, move things on a little? Wow, you're going to put that on me, huh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah well, what, that's the main man. Uh, well, I'd say number one, you're you're doing the right thing because you obviously love what you do. Yeah, yeah. Well, it goes back to what you right? said earlier. Yeah. And I would say uh, think big. Yeah. Think big, and uh, you know, spend no time looking about what you've done. Spend more time thinking about what you're going. Where you going do. forward? Fantastic. I will. I will bear that in mind. Um, just on your own achievements again, are you, are you proud of what you've achieved at PXG and, and and also this golf facility that we're at, at Scottsdale National? Are you, are you proud of that? You know, Is that a word you uh, use? am I proud of it? You know, and, and in some ways, I would say I am, but I rarely think about that. Yeah. I spend almost no time thinking about what I've done, and uh, always I always forward. worry about what I'm going to do, because, uh, you know, Andy, alligators are always... <laughs> ready, <laughs> ready, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a fair comment. But you still get excited about the new product. Uh, just on, we've got a part of... Um, this we've got uh, the new PXG apparel, um, which we're going to look at. But can I just ask, any plans to enter the golf ball market? Is that Absolutely. Something? You know, we will enter the golf ball market when we're ready to take an enormous beating. Yeah. And uh, today's not the day for that. <laughs> yeah, we move on. Right, I'm going to draw things to a close, and I've got one final question. I appreciate all the answers you've given so far. Uh, in many years from now, uh, so that time's up for Bob Parsons, are, are we all going to remember Bob Parsons? Oh, you're all going to remember Bob Parsons. Well, many years from now, the way the way the world turns, you probably won't. All right. I'm sure but, we will. Um, I don't like to think that if I'm remembered at all, it'll be in the golf business, and it'll be from people that say, you know, all this advent of really good golf equipment started with Bob. Oh, well, brilliant. I'd like that. Well, I hope so. I hope so. It's an absolute pleasure, uh, and and I really appreciate the opportunity to sit down and talk to you today, and uh, I appreciate your time. Well. Pleasure's all mine. Andy. Oh, it was so good. Right, thank you all for watching. As ever, comments down below. And I'm going to move from here and I get now the chance to uh, hit some of these Gen 3 irons. I can't wait.